Good morning, a good vach, a good week to everybody. Thank you for joining. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuchan Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We say good morning as we do every morning to Linda and Denise from New York. Welcome, Mindy from Alberta. Shalom. And Jan is with, with us, Bokertov, in Mexico. And in Budapest, hello, Art is in Michigan. Bokertov, and welcome. This is in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Susan is joining us. And John from North Carolina, good morning. Clem in Brisbane, where it is. Clem, 12.30 a.m.? Wow. A real uh, trooper. <laughs> Eugenia. In Calgary, oh, another fellow Canadian in Calgary. Good morning. Tarek is in Egypt with us. Thank you for joining. Sarah in New York, good morning. Um, Elaine, Georgia. Boker Tov. Lara, good morning to you in Queens, New York. And Robert, shalom to you in Boston. Yochanan. In Jerusalem, oh, all right, that's great to have the Holy City joining us. Thank you, Yochanan. And Stan in London, England, greetings. And Joanne in Toronto, or Joanne rather. Um, welcome, Joe. So, uh, Joe in uh, I'm not certain where, but wherever it is. Thank you for joining. Pamela Bokertov. Uh, Chuba. <laughs> oh, someone else from Alberta. How do you like that? Ben Avram. Okay, shalom. Alberta is a well... Uh, uh, represented over here. Aliza in Houston. Hello. Chris in Mexico, good morning. Diane in London, Ontario, good morning. Uh, Grace in Redmond, Washington, welcome in. Batya and David in Montreal, thank you for joining it. Emeka, I think I pronounced that right, I hope. From Nigeria, shalom. Greg and Paula in Bakersfield, California, where it's very early. Ruby in Costa Mesa, California, where it's also very early. In Albert, and in Edmonton. Wow, look at that. We've got uh, Canada well represented on the, uh, uh, well, it's not the West Coast, actually, but probably where it's snowing quite a lot. Mika, Shalom, Erica in Norway, thank you for joining. Martin in Abaju, Abaju, Abaja, I'm probably pronouncing it right. Paulo in Brazil. Okay. We continue today in the compiler's forward, the Alter Rebbe in his forward, um, making the argument to learn his book, the Tanya, Sefer Shabbainini. And although in yesterday's class, in the first part of the compiler's forward, the Alter Rebbe actually made an argument why um, a book isn't good. Because hearing words from your teacher is much greater than seeing words your own from a book. Because when you read it yourself, well, you might not get the message. And not only that, the message is meant on so many different levels. How is it possible that um, to find your particular message that you need and how to serve God? And therefore, if you went to your mentor, you went to your teacher, you went to your Rebbe for Yechidus, for private audience, of course you're going to get a much more personalized um, path in the divine service. And that's the argument that he made yesterday. So what's the argument? That we should be learning the book, Tanya. This is just one um, this picture of the altar, by the way, that was made of him when he was in prison over 200 years ago, 222 years ago when he was in prison. 
So the Alter Rebbe says as follows. I speak, however, to those who know me well. You might ask, well, do we know the Alter Rebbe well? I, after learning Tanya, perhaps we do. Of everyone of Anash, of the community, in our country, other countries, he says, whom affectionate words and exchange have happened in private audience. And he says, he continues, who has revealed to me the hidden recesses of their heart and mind in the matters that are pertaining to the service of God. Which, of course, is um, in one's heart. So he says, to those shall my words seep through and what I write be effective. Being that this is compiled from books and teachers of heavenly saintliness and so on. He says, all of them are answers to the many questions that have been posed continuously by those who've been seeking advice. Each person according to their stature and their service of God, which is, of course, everybody different. Receiving guidance and how to truly serve God. So that's what this book is. In other words, now that I've been saying, I know you and you know me. And I know what's in your heart because you revealed it to me. And even the things that were not revealed, the Alter Rebbe knows. To things that we don't even know about ourselves, our Rebbe knows. So I know what's there, and I know the issues that, because it's all been revealed to me. So you can say, well, how does that apply to us? We did not have private audience with the Rebbe. So Rebbe Rashab says, when you learn Tanya, it's like having a private audience with the Alter Rebbe. So the tr that's firstly. Secondly is, when it comes to serving God, right? When it comes to being self-serving, so this book is not, you know, how to, how to win over friends, it's not the book. How to um, influence people, how to make lots of money, it's not the book. That's all self-serving stuff. But if it's about how to serve God and ultimately how to uh, fulfill what God created you for, right? I've mentioned many times, the Altair is not saying this, but parenthetically, um, mentioned many times um, I mentioned that either we're here to serve or we're to be or we're to be served. The human condition is what we want to be served. I want you to enlighten my life. I want you to empower my life. I want you to make my life more meaningful. I want you to make my life more enjoyable. That's because I'm here to be served. So that's one way. So this book is not here for that how to win over friends and how to be, uh, to, uh, to influence others and so on. Um, that's all, that's just all self-centered stuff, which all the self-help books ultimately are about. They're all self-serving. This is about serving God. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have influence on others, but it, the point is about something that's beyond influence so you can gain. So if that's the case, then the truth is what's in my heart and what's in your heart is in the same heart of the Hasidim 200 years ago. There is really not much of a difference what the challenges are that I am self-absorbed, self-centered, self, self, -centered, self uh, you know, consumed. Hey, that's the human condition. We all have that. 
So the Alter Rebbe knows of all of those issues. All of the things, because the human condition is um, really uh, in that sense doesn't change. The context may change. The background might change. But human nature in that respect hasn't changed. So the Alter Rebbe, therefore, is speaking to me and he's speaking to you because, again, he's actually exchanging with us now, a private audience, because we're learning his teachings. So, yes, it does apply to us. So the Alter Rebbe now says, because time no longer permits that I should reply to everybody individually, that's one point, and secondly, even if you were to have a private audience with the Alter Rebbe, you know, you you go away and you're not there for two years later or whatever amount of time for the next private audience to get the next guidance, what's going to happen? We're going to forget. We're going to forget. So the Alter Rebbe says, therefore, I've put everything into this book. I've preserved as a sign and a service, a reminder for everyone's mind that there's no longer a need to have that the private audience. Why? For these Likute Amorim, these um, teachings, one will find, the Alter Rebbe says, tranquility for their soul and true counsel. Powerful words now. Everything that a person finds difficult in the service of God. Wow. That's quite a statement to make. Again, you're going to find tranquility in the teachings of Tanya for your soul. You're going to find true counsel for everything that you find difficult in not how to win friends, not how to feel good about yourself and do good and feel good, but in the service of God. Being good. Therefore, the heart will be firm and secure in God, who God ultimately is the one who completes us and perfects us. And you're going to be able to find those answers in, the, in these teachings, he says. Now, for those, the Alter Rebbe continues, who have a limited capacity to find the answers in these teachings, so the Alter Rebbe says, then you need to go to the foremost scholars in your town or who you can reach out to, to help enlighten you. So the answers are here, but that doesn't mean necessarily that we will be able to get the answers so simply. So the Alter Rebbe says, okay, so go to those who are mentors and teachers of Tanya and they will help you. And the Alter Rebbe then turns to those teachers and says, I request of you, do not put a hand upon your mouth and keep silent when there's people who need your advice and is seeking and how to serve God properly and better. Don't have false modesty and humility and say, well, I, you know, what could I help you with? What could I teach you? No, 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 no. No. The Alter Rebbe says, as our sages say, there's a bitter punishment for those who, what we call our manea bar, who withhold food, who withhold spiritual food and nourishment to those who need the nourishment for those who are seeking it. And a great reward for those who actually teach, as God will enlighten the eyes of both of them. Both the one who's in need and the one who has the wealth to give. God will enlighten both, which is amazing. That God will cause his face to shine the continents upon both those who are receiving and those that are giving. Um, and may, ultimately, the Alter Rebbe says, can, uh, says that may God shine his countenance on, on us in such a way that we should be privileged ultimately in a time that no longer we need a teacher because God himself will be so revealed in the times of Mashiach 
that the knowledge of God will be filled the earth like the waters filled the sea. Wow. Powerful. May this be his will. Amen. So, yes, this book has it all and what it means to serve God. Um, and for those who have learned before, see it. I have mentioned previously, and, and, and I'm um, one of the novel things I'm going to do this year is to provide a forum uh, where uh, a forum where we'll be able to take these teachings to another level. Stay tuned. I'm going to let you know if you give me your private message, me your your email. That would be the best way, so we can keep you abreast of all the uh, forthcoming things that will. Um, bring things to another level, God willing. In conclusion, the Alta Rebbe says that these, uh, these teachings um, have been now produced by, in the print shop by noble men who have put themselves personally and financially uh, forward and therefore um, he says that no one should print for the next five years this book, and the true problem was twofold. One was that they put forward uh, huge amounts of money, and therefore that they shouldn't lose as a result of that. But furthermore, there were those who were against the teachings of the Alter Rebbe, who made uh, false copies of uh, the teachings in order to falsify uh, the proper teachings. So the Alter Rebbe wanted to make sure that this book would, as it's properly printed, should be distributed and be the common um, text, and no one should use another text that was uh, somewhat falsified, you know, with, um, and the author of says, he congratulates them for their worthy deed, and as uh, someone who encroaches some other, another person's borders to take away something from them, um, not good blessings. The opposite of blessings come to the individual and those who will um, be protective of those borders will come to them blessings. These are the words of the compiler of the aforementioned Lakute in Martin. And that is the end of the um, compiler's forward. Okay, do we have any questions here? Um, all right, we see some people that, uh, well, one person that's got some issues. Um, don't pay attention to anybody who's got problems. Those problems are their problems, and uh, we shouldn't make them ours. But uh, I'll try to uh, eliminate that we shouldn't have... Uh, to deal with this. Do tshuva. That's what you need to do. All right. All right, folks. Uh, Chris, you want to copy the Tanya? Um, I would suggest Chaim Miller's book. Um, wait, what's it called? Give me a moment. I might have it here. Give me one moment.
thought I had it here. I guess it's upstairs in the library. It's not here. Um, just it eludes me now. Uh, whoever knows, they can put it up. Um, yeah, you can get uh, from Safaria. You can buy it online. I'll, um, God willing, I'll find out uh, and I'll show it to you tomorrow, hopefully. All right, folks. I'm Rabbi Rana Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kedeshim in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time. You have a wonderful day. And um, this is going to be, um, God willing, um, a beginning of a uh, wonderful journey together. And uh, looking forward. Be well.